Modern lighting is quite convenient. It's so cheap and plentiful that it's very easy to take it for granted. But for the vast majority of history, lighting was a much more complex affair and, in fact, a very expensive one. You see, prior to electricity, light sources were much fewer in number and availability. You had the sun, which was free for everyone, mostly. And then you had your trusty hearth at home, which would be kept at least partially lit at all times. Neither of these light sources was particularly useful for reading at night, however, assuming you could read in the first place. But let's say you could, which would make you either a noble or a clergyman. In that case, you'd be getting most of your artificial light from candles. These candles would be made of wax, beeswax to be precise, which obviously came from bees. Interestingly enough, beekeeping wasn't really a thing in early medieval Europe, at least not in the sense we understand it today. Most people didn't keep bees at home, but rather hunted for wild bee nests in nearby forests. Aspiring bee masters would try to domesticate these wild bees by carving suitable trees into perfect nesting places and tending to the colony if it decided to move in. I would like a jacuzzi over there and a helipad over there and an espresso thing over there. Now, this practice wasn't particularly efficient, but it didn't need to be because initially demand for beeswax wasn't all that high. But then, Christianity came along and created a ton of new demand. The vast sanctuaries of churches and cathedrals required an unprecedented amount of candles to be properly lit. Bees were the perfect solution to this Christian problem. So, European beekeeping traditions really kicked off with the church and its monasteries. The clergy took special care of the bees in its domain and created dedicated bee forests whose sole purpose was to nurture new colonies. Christianity even enshrined the status of bees in its doctrines, with numerous saints and popes exalting their chastity and diligence. That takes the sting out of things? Arguably, the spread of Christianity was the best thing to ever happen to bees, at least population-wise. However, as Europe's own population grew, the ever-increasing demand for food resulted in forests being cleared away to make room for farmland. In fact, the Middle Ages saw one of the greatest waves of deforestation in history. So while the church did an excellent job of supporting the bees on its own territory, secular deforestation destroyed bee populations pretty much everywhere else. Ironically, the areas with the highest demand for beeswax became those least capable of producing it. In medieval England, for example, beeswax became eight times more expensive than honey, and a single wax candle could cost more than a day's wage. So, from where did Europe get its beeswax? Well, from the few places with any remaining forests. Scandinavia and Russia. Indeed, beeswax became one of the most valuable goods in the Baltic sea trade. The famous Hanseatic League, a confederation of German merchants and guilds, monopolized this trade route and earned great profits in the process. Of course, these profits came at the expense of consumers. Well, we certainly don't hear of that happening anymore. <laughs> so, by the 12th century, pretty much only the nobility and the clergy could afford wax candles. The fact that they used copious amounts of them didn't help. St. Peter's Basilica in Rome had 1,300 candles burning at all times in the shape of a cross, while the funeral of Edward I saw a total of 850 pounds of wax being burnt. The situation in England, specifically, got even worse when Henry VIII decided to cut ties with the Pope. In addition to getting as many divorces as he wanted, he also closed all the monasteries, destroying a large chunk of England's beeswax production. Now, the European commoner did have one alternative. Rather than making candles out of beeswax, he could use tallow instead. Tallow is made of animal fat, and while its candles are dimmer, smokier, and generally quite smelly, they're still better than nothing. Candles remained an expensive commodity well into the 19th century, when German chemists discovered how to turn petroleum into paraffin wax, 
which is what we use in our candles to this day. So, there you have it. The humble candle was quite the luxury not too long ago. Anyway, my friends, I hope you enjoyed our brief dive into the heart of medieval beeswax economics. I'm sure this story will make for interesting dinner table conversations, so do let me know if you manage to impress someone with your esoteric knowledge and perhaps even consider supporting me on Patreon. That would be greatly appreciated. In any case, you shall hear from me again in two weeks for another bright, scented, and smokeless episode of Side Quest. Oh, I think there's a bee in here. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> <laughs>